Dun, 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 dun. It's and, time. <laughs> and we're back with another edition of Axe the Coach. Got my man Jeremy here. That's me. Hey, if you have not, if you have never seen this guy pose, you're missing out. Because uh, <laughs> it's so funny. We were talking about when the first time I seen him pose, and many moons ago, I was like. If it was a cartoon, my mouth would have dropped and tongue would have rolled out and rolled back in. Because this dude's posing is phenomenal. But not only is he a great poser, he's also a natural bodybuilder himself, as well as a coach, trainer, and many things, and many other things. Business owner, the whole nine yards. Yeah. This guy's the whole package. So, thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> we are 16 weeks out from the Phoenician Classic. 16 weeks. What are like your top three to five things a male bodybuilder should think about or start doing to prep for their show? Well, <laughs> first off by saying thank you for having me. I'm excited for this. And uh, yeah, so the, uh, I would say I would say probably have a top three mm -hmm. and it really applies to all competitors, not just male bodybuilders, but bodybuilding, um, and yeah, I'll just say all competitors. Okay. So all competitors, basically number one, I think, uh, is mindset, and the mindset kind of ties into the next two, and it also ties into pretty much everything when it comes down to the foundation of why are you doing this in the first place. Absolutely. So um, the mindset that you have when it goes into the prep before the prep, I'm hoping that everyone had a prep before the prep. <laughs> right. Know, if, if you're going in with your deck of cards this thin, it's going to be a very yeah. good prep. And, and that's, I mean, that's, I'll just jump on that real quick. That's another thing. That I tell this to everyone. If someone comes to me and they, they want to do a show or they uh -huh. just want to get fit or whatever it is and they say, I have this much time, what can you do? <laughs> I say, well, His expression uh, said it all. <laughs> I say, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what you want to do. Going to the future. You know, so, so the prep before the prep, I, it's an analogy I use all the time that the fuller your deck of cards, the better. Right, so then right. you're going into the prep with more to work with your volume and training, your cardio, your your macros, how full they are, how high you get your metabolic capacity. All those things are going to be valued right at this starting point. If you're starting at 16 weeks out, right? Because then that's when you go, okay, what am I going to do next? You know what I mean? But if you're starting from here, I don't know how you're going to work up to this unless your genetic mold is for you to be very lean, right? And and maybe even thinner, and just in general, and you need to grow into a show. Yeah, pretty small percentage on that, but um, also a possibility. Um, so yeah, when it comes to it, man, so number one has to be mindset. And the mindset is where, like, why are you doing this in the first place? You know what I mean? Because that's what's going to hold you at the end of the day, whether you're getting up at 5 a.m. to go train, or if you're going at 9 o'clock at night to train, you're going to have hard days. It's yeah. going to be, it's not easy. <laughs> you tell yes. everyone this. Like, everyone thinks that competing, it's like, oh yeah, my friend did it. Like she enjoyed it, she did this, this, and that, and she plays well. Like I totally want to do it, and it's like, hey, that's great. But right. you gotta understand, like she had some hard days. If you had, if there's no hard days during your prep, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, like the, there's there's no no one's ever gonna tell you that it's like, yeah, man, I won that show, piece of cake. <laughs> I did cardio one time, man. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like you're gonna have those days of doubt, and it's like, mm -hmm. and if you don't have the correct mindset, or even constantly working on your mindset to, to get past those moments of doubt, then the right. doubt's going to take over. Yeah. And that's when you start questioning everything you're doing. And it's okay to question those things because then it's going to make you work harder. But you have to get through those moments. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been doing this now for 10 years to where I've been training in the gym. I've been training people for I don't know how many years now, but it's like going through those experiences, like you have a lot more days of doubt than you do the positive days of, I'm going to go out there and be number one. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. It's like, those are the days that hopefully you train the hardest and you give it your all. But it's like the days of doubt, that's where it's like, you need to really look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, why am I doing this? You're doing it for you, for one. Right. It's like, no matter if you're, if you have these people supporting, whatever your circumstances are, support, no support, right. financial situations or whatever it is, it's like, at the end of the day, it comes down to you're doing it for you. Right. So it's like, what's pushing you to get to that point? Whether it's, I want to lose 30 pounds again on stage or like I want to I want to push myself for this or whatever the goal is but I'll tell you right now you're going to grow mentally more than anything and I tell us like anytime someone comes to me it's like you're going to have so many challenges yeah. that the growth that you get mentally through competing nothing else compares no, no. it's like it's yeah. those because of so much so many variables come into play to where you're, you're questioning yourself so often mm -hmm. and now that social media is so big right <laughs> I can't tell you how many how many people I've worked with they say like 
Look at this girl. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. but look at this guy, man. I don't look, look at the back like that. that. Or like, so it's like that's one of those things. It's like that's it. Honestly, doesn't matter because you don't know who's going to show up that day. Right. You, 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 I I, I used to do it as well. Where I'm like looking at this guy. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like he's seven weeks out. I'm seven weeks out. He looks ten times better than I do. And then I got stage and I beat him. Right. And it's like because that's the thing is like you yeah. don't know what they're going to look like yeah, today the day of the show. Of the show. Right. You don't know if that's got a great filter on it to make him look like a million bucks. Right. So that's where it's like. You can't let any of that stuff play with you. So mm-hmm. that really, all that, I feel like, ties into mindset. Right. You know, so that's what I feel like. That has to be number one. And then that, that'll that kind of, I don't know if you want to touch yeah, no, it. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Touch so it. Like, me. So that, that kind of flows right into the next one, which is posing. Okay. You know? And I say posing not only because I love it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, um, posing because, you know, posing, is, it's all about, it's your time to present. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like all that work that you put in. If you choke, if you get nervous, if you if you didn't practice posing, you don't right. know your positioning, you have no flow, you're gonna let yourself down. Yeah, it happens. It happens all the time. I've worked with people that have done it, mm-hmm. and it's like I know friends that have done it, and it's like, and it's always a crappy experience. The last thing you want to do is yeah. mess up on your posing. Yeah. So it's kind of like that should be the 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 easiest part of it all. Right. Some people it's the hardest, and which is okay because I understand that not everyone has the coordination, not everyone has the confidence in the flow, mm-hmm. but that's where. It goes into my third one, which I'm going to kind of bounce back and yeah, forth. Yeah, no, back to which going. is which is the coach, right? You know, so it's like wh- whoever your coach is or whatever they're doing, and hopefully they have a good solid plan. But hopefully they care enough during that prep to keep your mindset on point and build confidence throughout your posing. Right. You know, so these are things that I firmly believe when it comes to prepping someone for a show is that it's like all this stuff ties in together because this is what's going to get you to feel comfortable on stage you know right. what I mean it's like it's not comfortable you know what I mean yeah. like me I, I've, I've been a dancer my whole life I've been that guy that wants to go out in the middle of the circle mm. and do this and that and battle and be on stage and do, I love those things but it is uncomfortable <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like I don't, I don't know who will tell you that it's like oh it's so comfy up there you know what I mean like you're just going to enjoy it it's like you're nervous there's the lights you got other people standing next to you oh, yeah. fighting for your placement like all the work you put in all the sets all the reps all the time all mm-hmm. that stuff comes down to that one moment the last thing you want to do is mess up your posing yeah you know so it's like that's where learning confidence from your coach hopefully or even self building yeah. you know whatever you do on your own time like those are the things where it's like it needs to be a revolving circle it's where it's like your mindset's on point to help you with your confidence and your posing your coaches to reassure you that you're on point absolutely you know so it's like if your coach doesn't know what they're doing then maybe look out for some other sources you know I mean that can help with that situation yeah. and this is another tip to anyone. If you have a coach and you, you're doubting everything they're doing, if you want to speak to someone else, make sure your coach knows. Because that's, I, I got to tell you right now, it's, <laughs> it's so hard on the other coach yeah. when you're getting questions asked and you're like, I wish I could tell this other coach that I'm on the same page. Yeah. Especially if they just don't have the knowledge, it's okay. You know yeah. what I mean? It's totally fine. Yeah. If, you, if you're great at one thing and you're not that great at another, yeah. it's fine. It's like, that's what this is all about. We're all yeah. about learning and growing. So, um, so yeah, so when it comes to the coach, uh, try and stick to their plan, you know, and, and, and make sure you don't be like, I'm just going to do my own thing and not tell them, you know, it's right. like the best thing to do is get up in there and let both of them know what's going on or even as a third party or right. whatever it is. That way everyone can work together and come up with the best yeah. plan. And then all in all, you should be able to decide who's going to be the best fit for you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a great point that you touched on because it reminded me of even when um, I've worked with, you know. I've worked with a couple of other coaches where they're the primary, they're the lead coach. Mm-hmm. And then I'm the coach of, you know, a specialized movement or I'm the coach right, of, right. you know, of the nutrition aspect or I'm the coach of the posing aspect. Mm-hmm. So, but it's a team effort. It's kind of like we right. all get in there together and make sure that we're on the same page. The ultimate, the end, the end result is mm-hmm. the competitor needs to have the best experience possible. Right. And then, so the pretty much what we're doing is sharing and it's a sharing of well of knowledge to make sure we put the make sure we're giving this person this, the exact same information so that we're all on the same page right. so that the competitor ultimately has the ultimate experience on stage. I like they use the word experience. Yeah. And versus yeah. just package. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about it's, it's really just all about the competitor having that great experience. Mm-hmm. So if it has to come from multiple sources right. in order to put together that great experience, so be it. Right. But it's just, it's up to the competitor. It's definitely the competitor needs to let you know, let their primary coach know that, hey, I'm talking to X, Y, Z um, about, you know, about nutrition or about posing or, you know, about whatever. 
So that way, everyone gets on the same page. Mm -hmm. and, and what typically what ends up happening is the competitor has a better experience. They actually put, they actually have a better stage package or stage right. presence because the confidence level is so far, is so, is so through the roof because you got three people feel, feed, feeding into you instead of just one. Right, and that's where it all comes down yeah. to uh, the posing aspect. Yeah. I mean, it's like, because when you, and this is pre judging and finals, you know, so it's kind of like if, if everyone can be on the same page and you're able to enjoy those we were just talking about yeah. before, you're able to enjoy it, it makes the show more enjoyable for one, and then for two, you're going to have fun. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, like the, the, the competing part, it's like it, it should be fun to some extent. You know yeah. What I mean, there should be, there should be where you step off stage and you say, oh, I want to do that again. Right. You know, it's like if you have a terrible experience, if you're going back between coaches or opinions or social media, yeah. and all these things are conflicting your decision making, and then you get on stage and you don't even know what the heck you're doing. Right. It's <laughs> going to be a shitty experience. It's like you're, you're going to have all those moments of like, this this sucks. I'm not going to do this again. Right. And then that's that's the worst thing to happen right yeah. there. You know, it's absolute like, worst. I, I would I would rather take fifth and be like, I can't wait to come back in and work harder and do this, this and that right. versus having a terrible experience and saying I'm never doing this again. Competing is for yeah. only certain types of people and this is that. It's like, right. dude, we can all do it. Yeah. It can all if we done. get those things in line to where it's like, I, I, I always say it's like competing is not for everyone, but everyone can do it. There you, you go. Know? So it's like, because yeah. it takes the, the certain mindset, you know what I mean? It's like if you constantly are, are wanting to give up on everything and you don't have any support, if you're not able to support yourself or whatever, whatever the case is, it's like you, you're going to end up defeating yourself and sabotaging any future plans you had. Yeah. So yeah. that's where it all kind of ties back in, you know, it's where it's like, yeah, boom, 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 yeah, yeah I think so. So, man, I mean, great, I mean, Jerry, he just touched on quite a few great things. I just got one more other question for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I know that you're about uh, 10 weeks out from your show. Yeah. When is it? <laughs> July 15th. <laughs> July 15th. But, yeah, I'm actually kind of going back between two shows. I don't know. Okay. So I just talked to Matt Sheffield and he said that there's one in uh, Albuquerque. Okay. As well. And I was shooting for the one in California, but... No, I'm back to, yeah, I'm trying to weigh my right. odds now, which ones I want to do. But right. either way, super excited because I look at it like I've been training 10 years for this moment. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and this whole, I mean, the past 12 months, man, I've had like five different injuries, a knee, plantar fasciitis, mm -hmm. shoulder, tendonitis, right. all of I freaking smashed my finger, lost half my oh, nail. I was like, all these things are telling me like you shouldn't be competing. I said, nothing's going to stop me. And uh, yeah, man, so it's it's been, it's been a hell of a ride, especially opening this gym, you know, it's but uh, I look at it to where it's making me it's making me work harder. It's right. helping me focus more to, to really dial in on the things that are really important in my life. You know, and that's where I mean, competing. You know, it's not like it's my life, mm -hmm. but this lifestyle that I like to approach. Right. You know, and, um, so yeah, man. I mean, working for as as long as I have towards it. You know, it's like I, no matter what comes my way, right. I'm like I, I better and accidentally chop my foot off. That's the only way I'm not getting yeah. on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I break a finger, I'm like, I can still I can curl. Still <laughs> I still get some presses. You know? <laughs> so. so there you have it, folks. So you hear it from a natural pro himself that's, you know, that's balanced, that's, that had his own circumstances that he's balanced through, but nothing's going to stop him from getting on stage. You know what I mean? Like I said, unless it's a broken foot. Yeah, I mean, and even then he might do a frozen routine with a crutch. You know, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> so, guys, I just want to tell you that if you are looking for someone to help you choreograph your posing routine, or if you need a posing coach, reach out to this man. I'm telling you, like, if I was to ever step on stage, <laughs> I would call him for posing. <laughs> we would dance a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, thanks, right. my. It. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, guys, tune in again. Ask the coach if you got um, if you uh, the the three things kind of like Jeremy touched on was pri his primary thing mindset. The second thing posing. The third thing if you're going to work with multiple coaches, make sure everyone's on the same page. Bam, bam, boom, <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Did it? I was the button.